very good evening students let's continue with the topic of dividend decisions so let's start with the dividend discount model students today and then we will cover up all the questions from the practice perspective so as per our yesterday session as per our previous session we have discussed about the mm approach the walters model and gordon's model in gordon's model we have studied about two different formulas in dividend discount model the model it says is that you take the dividend absolute amounts what is expected to be paid in the years to come and take a present value of that okay <clears throat> So good evening, Nikita, Bhumika, Harmisha, Tanishka, Kadambri, Anirudh, Tanishka. Okay, but today your messages are reaching Tanishka. Linter's model is not there now, Tanishka, as per the revised study material. Anmol, Mansi, Sanya, Sahil, Sushil. Good evening, everyone. Yes, let's start. So here the price is equal to. Dividend that is expected to paid after first year divided by 1 plus Ke raised to the power 1 plus dividend expected on the second year divided by 1 plus Ke raised to the power 2 plus dividend 3 1 plus Ke raised to the power 3 and so on up to dividend table at the end of nth year raised to the power n. So this is basically discounting all the different streams of dividends payable at the different year and taking the value there at that is called as dividend discount model. The present value of this will be equal to the price. Now, if you see students, we have studied in three different forms. First one is the zero growth. Second one is the constant growth. And third one is the variable growth. Good evening, Sri Rang, Basav Raju, Avinash, Gajendra, Hardik, Sushil. Good evening, everyone. Now, zero growth. In case there is a zero growth, what will be the price? Dividend divided by Ke. There is no growth, right? Even if you do D1 plus G, it will be zero because there is no growth itself. So whatever is dividend divided by Ke will give us the price. Constant growth students. Constant growths we have studied, right? Constant growth is the revised Gordon's formula, which is Dividend at 0, 1 plus growth, correct? Whole divided by Ke minus G. This is the Gordon's formula that we have already studied in case of constant growth, right? And this was actually what? Gordon's revised formula that we have discussed in our previous sessions towards the end. We also call this as bird in hand theory. And variable growth is what we have discussed above. Above formula. Okay, which is this one, the dividend discount model. Gunjan, uh, I will just summarize towards the end. Okay. I'm not using Hindi as of now because I'm not supposed to use. That's why I'm taking it in English for the benefit at large. I will summarize at Hindi towards the end, Gunjan. Okay, I will do that. Now. <laughs> Santosh. Perfect. Now let's come to question number fifth, students. We have a lot of questions to cover with very short time. So let's not waste our time and do the questions revision. With these revisions, we will be able to revise our concepts too. X Limited is a no growth company 
and it pays a dividend of rupees 5 per share if the cost of capital is 10 percent compute the current market price of the share simple there is no growth just now we have studied take dividend divided it by the cost of equity you will arrive at the price 5 divided by 10 percent is equal to 50 so the price is equal to 50 rupees simple students let's move ahead xyz is a company having a share capital of rupees 10 lakhs of rupees 10 each okay if it distributed current dividend of 20% per annum annual growth rate in dividend expected is 2% the expected rate of return on equity on its equity capital is 15% calculate the price of share applying the gordon's growth model so students this is talking about the gordon's growth model first of all let us put that formula what is the gordon's growth model price is equal to d0 1 plus growth divided by ke minus growth correct now we have to identify what is d0 now students 10 rupees is the value per share 20 percent is the dividend so d0 is equal to 10 rupees multiplied by 20 percent is equal to rupees 2 per share then growth is equal to 2 percent that is given straight away ke is equal to 15 percent so can we put all these things in the formula yes so price is equal to 2 rupees 1 plus growth rate which is 2 percent whole divided by 15 percent minus 2 percent so this comes out as 15.69 Okay, students, so the price is equal to 15.69 rupees. I hope this is clear, student. This was easy. Moving ahead, portion number seven now, students. A firm had paid, yes, Bhumika, your answer is correct, 15.69, very nice. Question number seven, students, a firm had paid dividend at rupees two per share last year, okay? The estimated growth of the dividends from the company is estimated to be 5% per annum. So there is a growth estimation at the rate of 5% per annum. Determine the estimated market price of the equity share if the estimated growth of the dividends rises to 8%, falls to 3%. So the current expectation is 5%, but it may go up to 8%. It can come down to 3%. So there are three scenarios there given to us. Find out the present market price of the share given that the required rate of return of the equity investors is at 15%. So in a way, what they're saying is you have to arrive the present market price at 5%, the revised market price at 8% and the revised market price at 3%. So we have been given growth at 5% and another case we have been growth, we have been given growth at 8% and another case is growth at 3%. Dividend at 0th year is rupees 2. So Anmol is asking, since, since this chapter is about dividend, why are we computing the price of the share? Very good question. Because the price of the shares are impacted by dividend. And while you want to decide whether you want to pay dividend or not, the biggest factor you will consider in that decision is what will be the impact on your price. Because until and unless you know what is the impact on the price, you will not be able to declare a dividend. Okay. So, cost of equity is 15%. Now, let's first calculate the current 
मार्केट प्राइस पर शेयर वॉट फॉर्मुला वी कैन यूज द गॉर्डन्स ग्रोथ मॉडल विच इज पी जीरो इज इक्वल टू डी जीरो वन प्लस ग्रोथ रेट डिवाइडेड बाय के ई माइनस जी सो विच इज एक्चुअली टू इंटू वन प्लस फाइव परसेंट होल डिवाइडेड बाय फिफ्टीन परसेंट माइनस फाइव परसेंट so this becomes how much price is equal to rupees 21 okay now let's come to the second part the second part says that here let me mention current mps is when the growth rate is 5% okay revised mps when growth rate is at 8% then p0 will be 2 rupees 1 plus 8% whole divided by 15% minus 8% so this becomes 30.86 rupees now the last case is actually revised mps once growth rate becomes 3% hence the price is 2 into 1 plus 3% whole divided by 15% minus 3% which is then equal to 17.17 so gajendra is saying what formula to use if question is silent you have to assess based is the requirements that are given in the question or based is the facts that are given in the question now in this question dividend is given there is no mention of earnings so hence the walters model is escaped and if the question belongs to mm approach it will very much specify that whether dividends are declared or not declared you have to prove that the value of the form is same so hence it is not the case of mm approach also now within gordon's formula there are two formulas one wherein again you will need the earnings and second where you can still do uh, with you do solve your question with the uh dividend okay parmesha is saying 21 yes 30.86 and 17.5 there is small bit of rounding issue but that's okay sanya is saying 21 30.86 17.17 .17. yes sanya perfectly right good so this is done students let us move ahead let us go to the next question yes one more discussion that i have to do with all of you students is what what is pe ratio pe ratio is price earnings ratio right price earnings ratio is what market price per share divided by the earnings per share correct so market price divided by earnings gives us the pe ratio and what is ke ke is actually earnings per share divided by market price per share i mean this is also one of the relationship that we use okay this is also one of the relationship that we use which is eps divided by mps or can i say that ke ratio is reverse of pe ratio i mean ke percentage 
is actually inverse of p ratio yes just now we have understood if p is equal to mps divided by eps and k is equal to eps by mps then both of them are reverse and what is r r is rate of rate, rate of return on the investment right that is what eps divided by the book value per share this is also one of the formula i'm just putting it everything here so that later on while we are linking or let's say in some of the questions these formulas will be used i'm just revising these right because i think most of you would know what is pe what is ke and what is r and the relationship between ke and pe ratio Okay. The following information pertains to Messrs XY Limited. Earnings of the company is rupees five lakhs. Dividend payout ratio is sixty percent. Number of shares outstanding is one lakh. Equity capitalization rate, which is KE, is twelve percent, and R is actually fifteen percent, which is the rate of return on investments. Calculate market value per share as per Walter's model. This is what we have to calculate the market value per share as per Walter's model. Simple. First of all, we will put our Walter's model here. Price is equal to dividend. Plus earnings minus dividend, which is the retention amount. On that, we will multiply with R and divided by KE, whole divided by KE. So dividend comes out to be 5 lakhs. Into payout ratio is how much? 60% students. So on this 5 lakhs, 60% is the dividend that is being paid out. Okay, so this comes out to be 3 lakhs. Dividend per share is actually 3 lakhs divided by 1 lakh, which is 3 per share. Is it clear students? So the dividend per share is 3 per share. Similarly, earnings will be 5 lakh divided by again EPS I'm talking about divided by 1 lakh comes out to rupees 5 per share. Sanya, can you please refer which uh, page are you referring to the module in case of a variable growth? I will clarify that. Very nice. Then I think Nikita and Sanya have already replied to the solution as well. So now comes the price will be 3 rupees, which is dividend. Then 5 minus 3 multiplied by R which is 15% divided by 12 which is the cost of equity whole divided by 12%. So this comes out to be 45.83. So the price comes out to be 45.83 rupees per share. So your answer is correct. Chitlapalli, Sanya, Harmisha, and Nikita. Your answer is correct. Page number 8.29. Wait.
okay see i understood in case of a dividend discount model i see in case of a dividend discount model there is one small correction which we can note thanks sanya for highlighting that so in at last there will be a rv as well right the residual value that also will get added and the present value of that will come okay so please note this correction students and thanks sanya for highlighting this this will be the residual value that will also get added and the present value will be taken for the price okay students let's come back here we were here then the next part optimum dividend payout ratio according to the walters model and the market value of the company's share at that payout now we have to compare r and ke so what is the optimum payout ratio students tell me since r is greater than ke hence it is better for the company to pay 100% dividend or do not pay any dividend to reinvest the entire amount and hence dividend payout should be zero yes pooja gajendra sanya harmisha all of you are correct bhumika perfect bhumika now gomati is asking that rate of return on investment and when it is divided by cost of capital gives what so if you see the rate of return is 15% so in a way on 2 rupees i will earn 15% so that comes out to let's say 0.3 now 0.3 from the market's perspective what will contribute to the price is how much it will contribute to the price will be 0.3 divided by 12% reason being market expects 12% so according to them the fair value of this 2 rupees of earnings translates into 2.5 which is 0.3 divided by 12% it translates out to be higher from the market perspective because market is not valuing this 2 rupees earnings as 2 rupees market is valuing this earnings as 2 and a half because of the cost of equity i hope um, gomati the query is clear so the rate of return getting multiplied and div divided by the cost of equity gives us this comparison okay so now the revised price basis the zero dividend payout will be 15% divided by 12% multiplied by 5 minus 0 whole divided by 12% is equal to 52.08 so bhumika has already given that answer 52.08 thanks for that it's correct and chetla palli has also given the answer well in advance very nice students yes rehan i can show you the calculation of 45.83 let me do one thing let me remove all this because this is not the fair part of the calculation so this is the calculation yes nikitanamal your answer is correct 52.08 i hope students till now things are clear <coughs> let's move ahead students
क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन नाउ स्टूडेंट्स टेकिंग एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ थ्री डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स दैट इज ग्रोथ नॉर्मल एंड डिक्लाइनिंग कैलकुलेट द शेयर प्राइस यूजिंग द गॉर्डन मॉडल देर आर थ्री फॉर्म्स ग्रोथ फॉर्म नॉर्मल फॉर्म एंड डिक्लाइनिंग फॉर्म ओके एंड नाउ दे आर आस्किंग एस टू कैलकुलेट द शेयर प्राइस यूजिंग द गॉर्डन मॉडल ओके वॉट विल बी द शेयर प्राइस यूजिंग द गॉर्डन मॉडल what all what all things have been given in the question r k e e b and 1 minus b nikita we will cover all those questions i have covered all the questions given in the study material okay so these are the five different components r k e e b and 1 minus b there are three different scenarios growth form normal form and declining form let's start first of all let us use the gordons model gordons model we will use the original model which is e1 1 minus b divided by ke minus b into r correct so for growth forms what we will denote as p0 is equal to now what is e E is earnings rupees ten. One minus B is what? Zero point four zero. Right? If one minus B is zero point four zero and B is zero point six, so we will write as one minus zero point six zero. Correct? Whole divided by K E minus B R. K E is how much? Cost of equity ten percent. Minus B is zero point six zero into R of zero point one five. Any issues till now, students? In this, so this becomes four rupees divided by ten percent minus nine percent. So the price of growth firm becomes rupees. Four hundred per share. Very good, Parth and Anmol. Okay. It just simply we are using the formulas, making available the information that is there, given as a factual thing, and then putting it in the questions. In case of B now. A is growth form. B is what? Normal form. So P zero will be what? P zero will be again ten rupees, which is the EPS. One minus zero point six zero divided by ten percent minus again ten percent into because in this case the R is ten percent right so again we will do sixty percent which is the G into R yes Teja Tanishka your answers are correct. I think Kadambri has solved all of them. Very good, Kadambri. So this becomes hundred per share. For a normal firm, the pricing becomes hundred per share. So P zero is equal to hundred per share. Correct, students. For declining firms, what we do is price is equal to ten. One minus zero point six zero, which is B, it remains same. Divided by ten percent minus again sixty percent into R. What is R? Eight percent. So this becomes. Rupees seventy six point nine two. So the price 
for declining form is even lesser nikita your answers are correct kadambri your answers are also correct and chitlapili chitlapali your answers are also correct Teja, your answers are also correct. 76.9 to 100 and 400. Simple. So in this, do we observe anything? Here, the rate of return is higher than the cost of equity. What should be the optimum dividend policy in this case? The optimum dividend policy should be that the company should have retained everything. Correct. So, when R is greater than KE, we call it as a growth firm because the firm is actually growing better than what is expected by the market and hence the share price is also higher. Okay. Yes, Anmol, your answers are correct. <clears throat> Let's come to question number 10 students. The following information is given below in case of Aditya Limited. Earnings per share is given as rupees 60. Capitalization rate is given as 15%, which is again KE. Rate of return on investment, which is R is equal to 25%. DP ratio is actually given as 30%, and EPS is given as rupees 60. Compute price per share using Walter's model. So, how we can compute price per share using Walter's model? Simple using Walter's model. What is the formula? Price is equal to dividend plus earnings minus dividend into R divided by KE whole divided by KE. Okay, students, this is a simple formula of Walter's model that we have put. Now we have to put everything. What is dividend? So dividend is 30% of earnings per share, which is 60 rupees. So this is 18 per share. This is dividend. Earnings is how much? 60 per share. And R was how much that we have discussed above? R was 25%. KE was how much? 15%. So using above facts in the formula, we get price is equal to dividend of 18 rupees plus 60 minus 18 into 25 percent divided by 15 percent and whole divided by 15 percent. So the price becomes 586.67 per share. Yes, part 18 is dividend. Sanya, your answer is correct. 586.667. Kadambri, Harmesha, Nikita, and Keteja, your answers are absolutely correct. Very easy questions, students, right? Till now, it's been 
that you know we have given some of the facts and those are matching to some or the other formula we are putting it and arriving at the <clears throat> numbers now let's come to the second part what would be the optimum dividend payout ratio per share under gordon's model so whether it is a Gordon's model or whether it is a Walter's model, the concept to decide the optimum payout ratio is same. It is dependent on R and KE. That's all. If R is higher than KE or KE is, you know, higher than R, then we decide how to go about it. Since R is greater than KE in this case as well. What is R? 25% and KE is 15%. Since R is greater than KE, hence it is better to reinvest all the earnings into the business and optimum dividend payout ratio should be zero in this case as well. Padamri zero, yes, you're right. Part Parts are the R is greater than capitalization rate. Dividend should be zero. Very good. Sanya, P will also be zero if D zero on Gordon. Yes, Sanya, that's what we discussed yesterday that these formulas will not give you the real absolute values. These formulas gives you the relative values. So you really can't do apply the Gordon's model and then assuming that dividend payout ratio is zero and arrive at the value. That's what we were trying to discuss yesterday. Sanya, it, it gives you for the different scenarios, these are the prices. Yes, Keteja, R is greater than KE. Harmisha, your answer is correct. Keteja, Anmol, your answers are correct. Zero. Webber, yes, we will cover those MCQs. Okay. Tanishka, yes, it is zero. Shweta, no dividend to be paid. Perfectly fine. And Kadamri, zero, yes. Perfect. Okay, let's move ahead, students. Question number 10 is also done. This was for Aditya Limited, right? Now the next question students, question number 11. Now M limited belongs to a risk class for which the capitalization rate is 10%. Okay. It has 25,000 outstanding shares and the current market price is rupees 100. So the current market price is rupees 100. 25,000 are the number of shares. And the capitalization rate is 10%. It expects a net profit of rupees 250,000 for the year. And the board is considering dividend of rupees 5 per share. Okay. Okay. M limited requires to raise 5 lakh for an approved investment expenditure, which is fine. Illustrate how the MM approach affects the value of M limited if dividends are paid or not paid. So students, you see this question specifically has specified that you have to apply the MM approach and hence give your answers. So the KE is actually 10%. Number of shares is actually 25,000. The current market price is actually 100. 
नेट प्रॉफिट इज हाउ मच इज एक्चुअली टू लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड एंड द एक्सपेक्टेड डिविडेंड हाउ मच दे आर प्लानिंग टू गिव फाइव पर शेयर एंड हेन्स द ओवरऑल इन्वेस्टमेंट अमाउंट also that they are asking is 5 5 lakh rupees so first case let us say that dividends are paid it is a the questions are already uploaded in the form of assignment okay solutions you can note it down and even the solutions are given in the study material because All these questions are from the study material. Sahil is saying eight point three two. It's a general model, uh, is what they're trying to say, uh, Sahil. Okay. Yes. So let's come back and calculate the. Let's calculate the. शेयर प्राइस फर्स्ट यस सो डिविडेंड्स वी विल यूज द फॉर्मूला पी वन इज इक्वल टू पी जीरो वन प्लस के ई माइनस डी वन आई जस्ट रिटर्न इट सो दैट इट गेट्स रिफ्रेश so the p1 is equal to p0 is how much 100 1 plus 10 percent and this case we are assuming that dividends are paid so minus 5 rupees of dividend so p1 becomes 105 now the step second was what step second was calculation of funds requirement sorry this is a step 1 i should say like this and then here we can say step 2 funds requirement investments Is rupees five lakhs that is needed, right? That is straight away given given in the question. Out of that, earnings will contribute to two lakh fifty thousand, and hence we don't need to use that. Then dividend amount also we need to pay. How much five rupees dividend on twenty five thousand shares? Correct. Five rupees dividend on twenty five thousand shares, so it comes out to be one lakh twenty five thousand. Hence, at an overall level, we need three lakh seventy five thousand funds. Yes, K Teja, your answer is correct. Sanya, your answer is correct. Nikita Teja, Sanya, Tanishka, all of you are correct. Okay. So, Sahil, even on this heuristic model, so heuristic model is 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 not a separate model. Heuristic is a way by what we try to say is that it's a very general model, which can be self understood. So, it's a self understood model. Okay. Okay, Santosh. Harish, form value in both the cases is same. Okay, Harish has reached to the form value also. Very good, Harish. Nikita, your answer is correct. And Chetla Pali is also Harshita Chetla Pali has also gone to the overall value as as well, which is which is very good. 
So let's go to the third part. So the third step is number of equity shares to be issued. Three lakh seventy five thousand divided by one zero five. Correct. This is the funds requirement, and one zero five is the price. So again, let's not solve this. I will keep it like this. Then value of the firm. What was the formula? N plus delta N into P one. Minus investment plus earnings, whole divided by one plus KE. This was value of the firms, right? So this becomes twenty five thousand plus three lakh seventy five thousand divided by one zero five into one zero five minus five lakh was the investment amount plus. Two lakh fifty thousand was the earnings, whole divided by one plus ten percent. Yes, Bhumika, your answer is correct. Number of shares, Parth Sarthi, your answer is correct. But cash flow are same. Future cash flow are not impacted in this model, Sahil. Sahil, I have not understood your question. Nikita, your answer is correct. Harmisha, yes. Now you have put the correct answer, twenty five lakhs. And Kithija, your answer is correct. Okay. So the value of the firm in this case is twenty five lakhs. Let's go to B case now. When we say that dividends are not paid. are not paid when we say that dividends are not paid then the price becomes p1 is equal to 100 1 plus 10% minus 0 so p1 is equal to 110 Yes, Tanishka and Sanya, your answers are correct. Pooja, Kaur, your answer is also correct. So P1 is equal to 110. This is step number one. Step number two, funds requirement is how much? Now, in this case, we are saying that dividends are not to be paid. So what is your investment amount? Investment amount is, let's say, 5 lakh rupees. That is given in the question minus earnings. This is how much two lakh fifty thousand divided by the total amount is two lakh fifty thousand. Net. Funds required. Third step. Number of shares. Two lakh fifty thousand divided by one one zero. Value of the firm becomes. 25,000 plus 250,000 divided by 110 into 110 minus 5 lakhs plus 250,000 whole divided by 1 plus 10 percent. Yes, Bhumika, your answer is correct. Bhumika, Tanishka, answers are absolutely Perfect. 25 lakhs.
आई होप स्टूडेंट दिस इज क्लियर इजी एंड क्विक टू अंडरस्टैंड गुड इवनिंग विजय राघवन नो वरीज श्वेता ओके यू वुड हैव गिवन द नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स कादंबरी योर आंसर इज आल्सो करेक्ट केतेजा देयर इज अ चेंज इन फंड्स व्हेन डिविडेंड्स आर नॉट पेड यस केतेजा दैट्स व्हाट द नेट फंड्स रिक्वायर्ड हियर आर हियर इज 250000 इन केस डिविडेंड्स आर पेड द नेट फंड्स रिक्वायर्ड इज increased by 125000 which is 375000 in totality okay students i am just giving 30 seconds more to write this then we will move on to the next question which will be countered by the number of shares to be issued yes keteja that's correct higher funds required will be countered by the higher number of shares that will be issued by the company to raise higher funds yes shweta value of the firm remains same that is what we are trying to prove using the mnm approach where uh, the value of the firm remains same whether you want to pay dividend or the, whether you don't want to pay dividend okay students let's come to question number 12 question number 12 <clears throat> the following information is supplied to you total earnings that they have given is 2 lakhs number of equity shares of rupees 100 each is actually only 20000 okay then the dividend paid is 150000 price earnings ratio is 12 and a half now students remember our discussion on price earnings ratio as well as r and ke okay applying walter's model analyze whether the company is following an optimal dividend policy now for calculating an optimal dividend policy what two things we need we need r and ke is it given in the question no directly this time directly this time they have not given in the question so then what we need to do we just simply need to see what all facts are given in the question so we have been given pe ratio and from our knowledge of pe ratio the relationship between pe ratio and ke we know that inverse of pe ratio is ke right so we have been asked to use walter's model under walter's model we need r and ke for calculating r students what we said r is equal to earnings per share divided by the book value per share so eps is what let's first calculate eps eps earnings total is 2 lakhs number of shares is 20000 so 2 lakhs divided by 20 1000 it becomes 10 so eps becomes 10 per share so r is what 10 divided by what is the book value per share book value per share is rupees 100 students that is given in the question lintus model is not there now shri rang lintus model graham and dart model these are not there okay sanne you can leave uh, you you can write the additional number of shares by calculating over there or you can just mention that in the division form that should also be okay 10 divided by 100 is equal to 10% so r is equal to 10% we have computed r now let's compute ke now we know that ke is equal to 1 by pe ratio what is the pe ratio 12 and a half 
So Ke becomes 1 divided by 12.5. So 1 divided by 12.5 becomes Ke is equal to 8%. Clear students? Now you tell me if R is greater than Ke, then what is the optimal dividend policy? Sorry, wait, I think Linter's model is given as Page number 8.13, that is what Tanishka is saying. Let me check once again. <clears throat> okay, Linter's model is there, but the practical questions have been removed. Okay, so any which ways, okay, I will tell you the Linter's model. So earlier, there used to be a lot of practical questions also on Linter's model, which are not there now. Okay. I will explain the Linter's model. That's any which way is a very small part. Okay. Thanks, Tanishka, for that. Yes, Vijay Raghavan, I just now clarified. It's there from the theoretical perspective. I will cover that. Okay. Earlier, we used to have a lot of questions on Linter's model and there were other models also. Let's say Graham and Dad model, which the practical questions have been not there. Shweta, Sanya, Kadambri, Gajendra. Harmesha, just check again once. Why? Yes, you are saying reinvest. That means zero dividend. Perfect, Harmesha. Harshita. Chitlapali, yes, zero dividend. Part Sarthi, dividend is zero. Kadambri, okay. Perfect. Nikita was also saying dividend payout ratio is zero. Very good, everyone. Dividend payout ratio is zero. Okay. Now, we can mention that optimal. Dividend. Policy would be to reinvest and zero percent payout. Okay. Now the second part comes so analyze the company is following an optimal dividend policy because they have paid dividend, hence the company is not following optimal dividend policy. Hence, company is not following optimal dividend policy. Yes, web of Shweta, Nikita, yes. Now, compute the P ratio at which the dividend policy will have no effect on the value of the share. Compute the P ratio at which the dividend policy will have no effect on the value of the share. Okay, let's first of all, let's think that what is that situation wherein any dividend paid will have no impact on the value of the share. Okay. What is that situation? wherein any dividend paid will have no impact on the value of the share. Can you tell me students, can you recall and tell me from our yesterday's session, we discussed one situation wherein we said that any dividend will have no impact on market price per share students. Very good. I'm getting some good answers. Sanya and Bhumika, perfectly right. Request everyone else also to answer and think. Kadambri, but yes. 
हर्षिता चेतलापली येस व्हेरी गुड मानसी शर्मा हर्मिशा सेवक श्वेता श्वेता इज सेम ओके श्वेता विल प्लीज रीचेक वंस आई विल टेल यू पूजा येस यूर राइट Shweta, MM approach is an approach, but what was that situation? That situation was not under MM approach. That situation is when your R is equal to KE, then any dividend will have no impact on the MTS. Yes, Nikita, Gajendra, all of you are correct. Absolutely correct. Good, good, everyone. So. we have to say that when r is equal to ke then dividend policy will have no effect on the value of the share can we mention when r is equal to ke then any ratio of dividend payment is an optimum ratio correct so r is equal to ke is equal to 10% pe ratio comes as 1 by ke correct because in the question yes shweta r is equal to ke perfect gunjan buyback of shares also we have one question we will cover okay but this is not related to buyback so pe is equal to 1 by ke which is equal to 1 by 10% that comes as 10 times so p e ratio is equal to 10 times so p e ratio is generally denoted in the times factor i hope students this is clear till now R is less than the KE based on commercial pay dividend. Okay, Harmisha has given answer for the third part. Very good, Harmisha. Uh, uh. Now, third part. Will your decision change if the P ratio is eight instead of twelve and a half? Analyze. Yes. Let us discuss. In the third part. if p ratio is 8 then ke will be 1 by 8 so ke will become 12.5 percentage percentage this is the ke okay and in this case we are saying ke will be higher than r okay yes kadambri so ke 12 and a half percentage will be higher than the 10 percentage of r what is the optimum dividend ratio in this case tell me students in this case what is the optimum dividend payout ratio Yes, students. Tell me, if KE is greater than R, then the optimum dividend payout ratio will be seven 
सानिया पार्थसारथी पूजा तनिष्का अनमोल भूमिका एंड गजेंद्र यस ऑल ऑफ यू आर करेक्ट इट विल बी हंड्रेड परसेंट सो कैन वी कैलकुलेट द प्राइस ऑल्सो यस Wait, what is being asked in the question? Will your decision change if the PO ratio is this much? No, that's all. So we will say, wait, we will say, in case the PE ratio is eight times our decision. will change and the optimum payout ratio should be 100% hoti jagpati please check it's not zero in the third case it will be 100% kadambri and harshita chelapalli yes this is right mansi is asking how p ratio is calculated as 10 times mansi we have discussed in this case what is that one situation wherein any dividend you pay there will be no impact on mts that is when r is equal to ke because in the question it is asking you calculate the p ratio at which any dividend you want to pay it will have no impact on the market price per share that is when r is equal to ke and r was already 10% hence ke will also be 10% and p ratio is inverse of ke that's how we computed 1 by 10% is equal to 10 times okay now let us do one more thing let us compute the current market price basis whatever dividend we are paying using the walters model dividend plus earnings minus dividend into r divided by ke whole divided by ke okay so the price will be what is the dividend amount 150000 is the dividend paid right on 20000 shares so the dividend amount per share is 150000 divided by 20000 plus earnings is how much 2 lakhs Two lakhs divided by twenty thousand minus one lakh fifty thousand divided by twenty thousand. Correct. This is the earnings minus dividend into R. R is how much? Ten percent divided by KE is twelve and a half percent. Whole divided by twelve and a half percent. so here 12 12 and a half percent is basis the third part correct the cost of equity that is coming here we can actually calculate the price according to all the three parts but since this is given as analyze hence we have calculated the price here okay i hope students this is clear till now let's move ahead yes kadambri bhumika sanya sanya 8% we have not taken as i'm telling that for all the three cases you can calculate if for first case you calculate you can take 8% and hence your answer will be according to that okay 
ये स्टूडेंट्स लेट्स कम टू क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टीन सुसानिया बिकॉज वी आर नॉट गोइंग अहेड विद वॉट वी हैव गिवन एज एन ऑप्टिम सोल्यूशन वी आर गोइंग अहेड विद वॉट इज गिवन इन द क्वेश्चन बिकॉज इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द थर्ड इन द फर्स्ट हाफ ऑफ द थर्ड पार्ट वी हैव ऑलरेडी सेड दैट द हंड्रेड परसेंट पे आउट इज वॉट इट शुड बी ओके so now let's come to question number 13 students tanish ka yes yes sanya that's what i have just confirmed that we will take the dividend what it is given not basis of a recommendation okay so that's what i'm saying sanya even if you want to calculate you can calculate for all the three different parts considering the three different amounts as well as the percentages Question number thirteen. With the help of the following figures, calculate the market price of a share of a company by using Walter's model and dividend growth model, which is the Gordon's formula. What all things are given? Earnings per share, dividend per share, cost of capital, internal rate of return on investment, and retention ratio. Retention ratio is what is B. Correct. So. Price as per Walter's formula, we can just simply use d d plus e minus d into r divided by k e whole divided by k e. So this comes as six plus ten minus six into twenty five percent divided by twenty percent. Correct. R is twenty five percent. K e is twenty percent. And six and ten is explicitly given in the question. Harmesha has also given the answer already. So this is whole divided by twenty percent. Also, if we solve this, is come it comes at fifty five per share. So Harmesha, your answer is correct. Now second, using the Gordon's model. Gordon's model was price is equal to earnings. One minus retention ratio divided by K E minus B into R. So if we solve for this, then ten rupees is the earnings. What is the retention ratio? Forty percent. Forty percent is the retention ratio. That means sixty percent is the payout ratio divided by K E is how much? Zero point two zero. Zero point four zero into zero point two five. Yes, Harshita. Harshita Chitlapalli, your answer is correct. Tanishka, perfectly right. Kadambri and Harmesha, your answers are perfectly correct. So P zero in this case becomes sixty per share. Easy and simple, students. i hope there is no complication in understanding the topic as well as solving the questions routine is clear students yes sanya Answer is correct. Bhumika, your answer is correct. Kadambi, your answer is also correct. Okay, students. Now let me just quickly take a moment and discuss the Linter's model, students. So first of all, students, Linter's model is a traditional model. Okay, so it we will try to understand it from the formula itself. So d one is equal to d zero earnings per share into target payout right minus 
d0 into some kind of an adjustment factor okay so af is equal to adjustment factor and target payout ratio is what we expect to pay in the next year okay so there is an inherent assumption in this case students in this model it says that that a firm follows a long term objective of having some target in the form of payout let's say the company is following an objective of having a payout of 60% okay now 60% is what the company targets to pay out whatever earnings that they do now it is not related to r not related to ke nothing okay it's just a some sort of a long term objective that drives this target payout ratio right because as a as a company they want to make sure that you know at least 60% of what they are earning they are paying it to the shareholders so this will give them the expected dividend to be paid correct however we also take into consideration the actual dividend that we have paid in the last year or at the beginning of the current year which is d0 okay so we will start with that now whatever is our next year eps multiplied by the target payout ratio coming out to be the difference of that from the actual dividend paid last year has to be adjusted in the dividend but it will not adjusted at a 100% basis it will adjusted with one adjustment factor because we are not saying that whatever extra adjustment is coming that companies will pass on at 100% basis you remember students i have discussed with you that last 5 years you are getting 100 crore now suddenly you get 500 crore correct so there is a jump of 400 crore now will you pay or not so the companies will say that we have a speed of adjustment we will not adjust entire 400 crore and whatever is the target payout ratio 80% right so we will not directly pay you 80% of 400 crores that is where the adjustment factor comes into play now this adjustment factor again has no mathematical derivation it is again based on some of the objectives that the management is driving and hence using this adjustment factor we arrive at the incremental amount of the dividend and add it to the current level of dividend to arrive at the next year dividend students okay so if you see i'm just fairly writing here d0 plus eps into target payout ratio this is all in one bracket minus d0 this is in one bracket multiplied by the adjustment factor here okay students <clears throat> i hope this is clear and understood Let's come to question number 14 students. The annual report of XYZ Limited provides the following information. Now, Tanishka is saying assignment is not uploaded on the portal. Uh, students, I request everyone else to please check once. Because yesterday we started this assignment solving from yesterday and I mentioned it yesterday. Please check. Or otherwise, if it is not still there, still the portions are from study material again, is what I'm trying to say, okay? 
So Gunjan is saying AF meaning is not understood. AF meaning is just a simply time or speed of adjustment. So there is a, I mean, as I said that in a yesterday's example, if you get an abnormal gain, that entire abnormal gain, you will not pass it on to the shareholders in the form of dividend. There has to be some speed of adjustment. There has to be some time in relation to which, let's say you will say that I have a adjustment factor of 60% or let's say again, I'm taking an example of 80%. Okay. So if AF is 80%, that means only 80% of the incremental amount you will expect to add it to the current year ratio. Target payout ratio is again driving from the overall objective that the management wants to pursue because sometimes they will say that we will take at 80%, 60%, 50%. So it depends on them. Okay. Now let's come to question number 14. The annual report. Just a second, students. So the annual report of XYZ Limited provides the following information for the financial year 2020-21. What are they? Uh, net profit is given. Then outstanding 15% shares is given, which is 100 lakhs. Then number of equity shares is also given, which is 5 lakhs. R is given as 20% and K is given as 16%. Calculate price per share using the Gordon's model when the dividend payout ratio is given as 25%, 50% and 100%. So first of all, students, we will say that as per Gordon's model, the price formula is given as earnings 1 minus B raised to divided by KE minus B into R. Correct students. Okay, Harmisha, sure. I will ask the team to upload it again. Sanya. Okay. I think Sanya has given the answers correctly. Perfect. Not to worry, this is the question number four from additional questions from your study material. Okay, you can refer that. So price is equal to earnings one minus B K E minus B into R. Correct. Now we have to find out what is the earnings. So let's calculate calculation of earnings per share. How can we calculate students? First of all, let's take net profits. 50 lakhs less preference dividend. Preference dividend was how much? 15% on 100 lakhs, which is 15 lakhs. <clears throat> Sorry. So earnings for equity shareholders comes out to be 35 lakhs divided by number of shares. How many number of shares? 5 lakh students. So the earnings per share comes out to be 7 rupees per share. 
Yes, Shweta. 7 lakh is not the EPS. 7 is the EPS. 7 lakh will not be the right term to say. Okay. Now, first case. When growth was how much? Sorry. When the dividend payout ratio is 25%. So when DP ratio is 25%, then the price will be 7 rupees multiplied by the payout ratio, right? 1 minus B is the payout ratio. So that directly we can put as 25 divided by cost of equity, which is 16% minus the B, which is the retention ratio will be 0 0.75, correct? Multiplied by 0 0.20. So this becomes 1.75 divided by 0 0.16 minus 0 0.15. So this becomes, price becomes 175. Harshita Chetlapalli, yes, you are right. Shweta, yes. Gajendra, no, we can use this formula Gajendra because the dividend payout ratio is given for all the three different cases. Okay, Kadamri, your answers are perfectly correct. Now let's take the second case. When dividend payout ratio is how much? 50%. So then the price will be 7 into 0 0.50 divided by 0 0.16 minus 0 0.50 into 0 0.20. So this comes out to be three and a half divided by 0 0.16 minus 0 0.10, which is equal to 58.33 rupees. So the price in this case becomes 58.33 rupees. And the third case, when DP ratio is how much is 100% yes is 100% that means B will be 0 right retention will be 0 so the price becomes 7 into 100% divided by 0 0.16 minus 0 into 0 0.20 so 7 divided by 16% which is equal to 43.75 students. So in this case, the price becomes rupees 43.75. Veta, your answer is correct. Nikita, your answer is also correct. Bhumika, perfectly fine. Keteja, perfectly fine. Nikita, your answer is correct. Keteja, your answer is correct. Perfectly fine. Yes, Shweta, your answer is correct. Thanks for answering everyone. So with this, we have covered till question number 14 students. I think we are left with few more questions and then we will cover some MCQs also. Okay, I will be asking certain MCQs within the session and I will expect responses from all of you. And then towards the end, I will summarize in uh, Hindi. This is one of the, in Hindi language, this is one of the requests that has come. And then we will be good to close. So I think from a conceptual standpoint, we have covered all the concepts, right? Even Linter's model that I missed. And thanks for highlighting for that. And rest all things have been covered, students. Okay. Let's have a 10 minutes break now, students. It's 7.29. Let's. Again, reconvene at 740.
वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स लेट्स गो टू अवर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टीन ए एंड आर लिमिटेड इज अ लार्ज मल्टी नेशनल इज अ लार्ज कैप मल्टी नेशनल कंपनी लिस्टेड इन बी एस सी इन इंडिया विद अ फेस वैल्यू ऑफ रुपीज हंड्रेड पर शेयर ओके जस्ट अ सेकेंड Yes, Gunjan. P and P zero is same. P zero is just to denote the today's price. Yes, Gajendra, you are right. It calculates the dividend amount. Okay, Kiran. I will check. I will ask the team to please recheck and get it uploaded. Okay. Okay, Bhumika. I will explain the concept of stock splits. That is very easy, though. Okay. Now coming back, students. A and R Limited is a large cap multinational company listed in BSE in India with a face value of rupees hundred per share. The company is expected to grow at the rate of fifteen percent per annum for the next four years and then five percent for an indefinite period. So for the next four years, the growth is how much? The growth is fifteen percent per annum. So let's say this is year one, year two. year 3 and year 4 and then perpetually it will grow at the rate of 5% per annum the shareholders expects 20% return on their investments so that means ke is 20% company paid 120 as dividend for one of the financial year they have mentioned 21 fy21 they have paid let's say 120 rupees The shares of the company traded at an average price of three one two two on the last day. Find out the intrinsic value per share, and state whether the shares are overpriced or underpriced. So we have been given one value that is operating in the market. We have to calculate another value, which is the intrinsic value. Correct. Now this intrinsic value is using the dividend discount model. Correct. It's using the dividend discount model. so can we use that yes as per dividend discount model the price of a share is calculated as follows so the price is equal to dividend 1 1 plus ke dividend 2 1 plus ke raised to the power 2 up till dividend let's say till the fifth year One plus ke raised to the power five. Okay, let me just modify the formula here. So what will happen, students? For the fourth year, one, two, three, four, we have the numbers, right? We have the actual numbers. Now at the end of the fourth year, we know that now onwards the dividend will grow perpetually at the rate of five percent. So we have to arrive at what will be that value of the Fifth year onwards dividend will translate into as the number on the fifth year, so that will be calculated as KE minus growth. So this value is the value that is the present value of dividends of all the dividends that are there after the fifth year onwards perpetually. But this is the value at the end of the fifth year, so we will again do a present value of this and arrive at the present value as on today, students. Okay, so this is again very similar to the capital budgeting concept where we say that monthly there are cash flows and at the end there is a terminal value. So 
this is a terminal value and we are doing present value using this factor okay so the price is equal to 120 is the current dividend that has been paid now that dividend after one year will be 15 percent higher divided by one plus what is the grow what is the ke 20 percent raised to the power one plus next year will be 120 into 1.15 into 1.15 divided by 1 plus 20 percent raised to the power 2 plus now let's come to the third year so third year will be 120 into 1.15 raised to the power 3 divided by 1 plus 20 percent raised to the power 3 students No, Tanishka, now nothing is missed. Please check. This formula is absolutely correct, Tanishka. Because the last two terms collectively are giving you the terminal value, Tanishka. That's why. Okay. Okay, Teja is saying can't get the understanding of Ke minus G. Okay, let me explain. Let me first put the values here, then I will explain it again. Okay. Then plus 120 into 1.15 raised to the power 4 divided by 1 plus 20 percent raised to the power 4. Till here, we have taken the 4 years present value of the dividends that are going to come. Now, you are standing on the fourth year. Now onwards, fourth year onwards, that is the fifth year, sixth year, seventh year, there is a perpetual growth of 5%. So first of all, we have to arrive at that value. What will be that value? So that will be... <clears throat> So that will be 120 into 1 1.15 raised to the power 5. So first of all, the value of dividend at the end of the fifth year will be this much. Correct? This divided by 20% the cost of equity and 5% the growth that we will get, which is Ke minus G into 1 divided by 1 plus 20 percent raised to the power 5. Okay, students, now what is happening here is, no, Sanya, G was added in the formula over there, but here it's something else. I'm coming to that. Now, first of all, is this clear? Yes. Now, why we are doing this 20% minus 5%? So, students, what is the price once you have been given that Okay, let me give you a question here. The question is the dividends are expected to grow at the rate 5%. Okay. And cost of equity is let's say 25%. Current year dividend paid is let's say 20 rupees per share and you have been asked to calculate the price of share basis the above facts. Now students what you will do you will calculate the Gordon's using the Gordon's model 
you will say that dividend divided by ke minus g this is the gordon's growth model students can you remember gordon's growth model will say that the price is equal to dividend divided by ke minus g i hope all of you are there with me till now this is coming from the birds in hand theory students let me go back there quickly and tell you this is the dividend discount model c students here where we said that d0 1 plus growth let's say dividend divided by ke minus g remember okay tejan kadambri have given me yes perfect gunjan i am giving you that example only now if you have understood that can you tell me for this question that i have given what will be the value yes 20 rupees per share is the dividend divided by so current year dividend dividend i mean it is after the growth already so there is no need to take 1 plus 5 percent here separately okay i have given you 20 per, rupees after that growth divided by ke minus g which is 25 percent minus 5 percent so 20 divided by 20 percent i think this is 100 Okay, yes, this is 100. So the price becomes 100. Now, I am saying, I, I hope this is clear, right? Now I am saying that keep these facts same, but not today. You assume that this is going to happen four years from today. After four years. Now the moment it happens after four years, the moment it happens after four years, then we will have to calculate the value after four years and then take a present value of it, which is why we have done D5 divided by KE minus G and 1 plus K raised to the power 5 students. Teja, we cannot take 3122 at the end as the RV. We cannot take that because that is the value as on today. Yes, Teja. So Muskan has given the answer also. Let me just see what is the answer coming out to be. Yes, so students, please note here, there is one small correction that I have to put because till fourth year, the growth will be 1.15 and after that it will be 0.5 so please note this because after fourth year for the fifth year the dividend will grow by five percent hence we have to take it as 1.05 students okay i think muskan just recalculate it so basis this now the number is coming out to be price is equal to 1022.42 and the market price yes Harshita Chitlapalli your answer is correct dividend at the end of 50 year is normal growth of 15% and a 5 and yes Teja that's what that's what I have just now told that dividend at the end of the 5th year will be 15% growth for first four years and 5% growth for the fifth year. Now students, in the market, share is trading as 3122. However, the intrinsic value is lower. So the intrinsic value is this. And the market price, intrinsic price I can say not value, okay, is 3122. So the share is overpriced in the market. Share is overpriced in the market. Correct. I hope this is clear students. Uh, 
क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटीन इन मे टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी शेयर ऑफ आर टी लिमिटेड वॉज सोल्ड फॉर रुपीज फोर्टीन हंड्रेड सिक्सटी पर शेयर अ लॉन्ग टर्म अर्निंग ग्रोथ रेट ऑफ सेवन एंड हाफ परसेंट इज एंटीसिपेटेड आर टी लिमिटेड इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू पे अ डिविडेंड ऑफ रुपीज ट्वेंटी पर शेयर ओके देर इज अ डिविडेंड पे आउट विच इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू बी पेड एट ट्वेंटी पर शेयर ग्रोथ रेट इज सेवन एंड हाफ परसेंट एंड द करेंट प्राइस वॉज फोर्टीन सिक्सटी कैलकुलेट रेट ऑफ रिटर्न एंड इन्वेस्टर कैन एक्सपेक्ट टू अर्न अज्यूमिंग दैट डिविडेंड आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू ग्रो अलॉन्ग विद द अर्निंग एट सेवन एंड हाफ परसेंट पर ईयर इन परपेचुटी सानिया प्लीज री चेक अगेन इट्स वन जीरो टू टू पॉइंट फोर टू वन ओके now first of all they are asking us to calculate the cost of equity correct they are asking us to calculate the cost of equity now we can use the formula of price at 0 dividend at 1 ke minus g correct price at 0 is how much 1460 dividend at 1 will be 20 is the current dividend in that if we add growth we will get the dividend at the end of year 1 divided by cost of equity is what we have to calculate minus growth is 7 and a half percent students okay clear so basis whatever is given in the question we have used the gordon's growth formula and we have equated what all things are given and will compute the ke so ke minus 7 and a half percent will be 21 plus 7 and a half percent divided by 1460 okay students so the ke here becomes 8.97% yes sanya your answer is correct now the second part second part is it is expected that rt limited will earn about 10% on the retained earnings that means r is equal to 10% and shall retain 60% of the earnings whatever they are earning they will retain 60% of that in this case state whether there would be any change in the growth rate and cost of equity very very important so they are saying that there is a r of 10% and we will retain 60% we have to calculate that whether the growth rate will change what is growth growth is equal to b into r correct growth is equal to b into r so first we have to calculate basis the current growth rate what was the retention ratio okay just follow me yes sanya so let's say r is equal to 10% that is given in the question b which is the retention ratio is also given in the question is 60% correct we are saying that 60% we are going to retain correct now growth and cost of equity is what we have to calculate so one is very easy growth is equal to b into r which is actually 60% into 10% so 6% becomes the growth <clears throat> 
कैन आई से दैट रिवाइज ग्रोथ इज इक्वल टू सिक्स परसेंट ओरिजिनल ग्रोथ इज इक्वल टू सेवन एंड हाफ परसेंट I think there are lot of queries coming on the calculation part of this. I don't know what is getting the confusion here. I am explaining it again here. Okay. So, what have we understood? Ke minus seven and a half percent is equal to twenty one plus seven and a half percent divided by fourteen sixty. This was our equation. Okay. Now, Rehan, if you calculate this, tell me what do you get? Twenty plus seven and a half percent. You get twenty one point five in the numerator and fourteen sixty in the denominator. Ke minus seven and a half percent is again the same. Okay. Now, Ke will be. Now solve for this. It will be twenty one point five divided by fourteen sixty. It comes as one point four seven percentage. So Ke is equal to one point four seven percentage plus seven and a half percentage is actually eight point nine seven percentage. Okay, Rehan. understood now so yes students coming back now the original growth is 7.5% revised growth is 6% and r was 10% can we calculate what was the original retention ratio keeping r as same original retention Ratio will be seven and a half percent divided by ten percent, which is actually seventy five percent. So the original retention ratio was seventy five percent. That means the payout ratio original payout ratio is twenty five percent students. Correct, which is one minus seventy five percent, and hence. Can we calculate the earnings per share? Yes, but before that we have to calculate dividend per share. Dividend per share was twenty rupees. Using this, can we say that earnings is how much? If twenty rupees is the twenty five percent, then eighty rupees will be our earnings. Correct. We have got the earnings. Now the revised dividend is actually forty percent multiplied by eighty rupees. Forty percent is the revised dividend payout ratio. The revised Retention ratio is sixty percent, and hence the revised dividend payout ratio is forty percent. Students, so forty percent on eighty rupees comes out as thirty-two rupees. Yes, Sanya, 
is original assumed r to be the same yes we have assumed that the original r is same that's why we are able to calculate the overall value of the earnings right and hence now the ke cost of equity will be what again we will use the same formula students cost of equity will be the price is equal to dividend divided by cost of equity minus growth correct now the dividend we have calculated is 32 so 1460 is equal to 32 divided by ke minus revised growth is 6 percent students Nenshi, no, we cannot do that. We cannot calculate 7.5% assuming 0 0.075. Okay, you are saying 7.5% can we denote? Yes, 7.5%. If something is written as 7.5%, this will be 0 0.075 students. So you can solve it using this. Okay, now... K will be 32 divided by 1460 plus 6%. This one you need to do into 100 to arrive at the percentage. Okay. So the KE becomes 8.19 percentage students. So the revised cost of equity becomes 8.19. Yes, Pooja, your answer is correct. Okay, students. <laughs> now, students, let's go to the next question. Akash Limited has Miss Chandra Gangli, I have no clue on that. Maybe you can check with the relevant people. When will the live classes for November 24 starts? Uh, yes, Teja and Har Harmisha, your answers are correct. Okay. Now let's come to question number 17 students quickly. Question number 17. Akash Limited has 10 lakh equity shares outstanding at the start of the accounting year 2021. The existing market price per share is 150. Expected dividend is rupees 8 per share. The rate of capitalization appropriate to the risk class is actually KE they are telling is 10%. Calculate the market price per share when the dividends are declared, not declared. This is easy. This is the MM approach. We can do. Calculate the number of shares to be issued by the company on the assumption that the net income is 3 crore. Investment budget is 6 crore. And that too, when the dividends are declared, not declared. This is again MM approach. Prove that the market value of the shares at the end of the accounting year will remain unchanged irrespective of whether dividends are paid or not paid. This is again similar. So this is the entire question on M and N approach. Yes, Teja, you can ask the query. What is the query? So this I am giving for your home practice students. I will just mention the amounts. So dividends declared. Dividends not declared. Okay. So the market price is actually 157 and here it will be 165. Similarly, the value will be 1950 and here also 1950. 
And students, please note that this value I'm putting is the at the end value. Value at the end, which is not discounted to the present value. If you want to put that discounted value at, as on today, that also can be accordingly computed. Okay, this is a relatively very easy question, students. Okay. So, just a second. Huh? Teja is saying that there is a calculation error here. So, Teja, have you calculated for this, 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 this and this separately? Wait. So, see, <clears throat> the first part, this is the first part. Second, third, this is fourth and this is fifth. Okay. So the first part, we are getting a answer of 115. Second part, we are getting an answer of 110.2. Third part, we are getting an answer of 105.60. Fourth part, we are getting an answer of 101.2. And last part, which is the fifth part, the terminal value, this entire number. Okay, we are getting it as 590.42. So the total comes out to be 10. 22.42. No, the last part just check. I think you have mentioned 115, 110 is okay, 105.5 is okay, 101 is also okay. Only the last part, Teja, I think, is what you have to just see. 120 into 1.15 raised to the power 4 into 1.05 divided by 15% into 1.2%, 1.2 raised to the power 5. This is what has to be done. Sanya is saying, 16, son, can you please explain the dividend part on sub quotient 2? Okay. So let's come to question number 16. In question number 16, yes. So let's come to the second sub part. Second sub part said that the retention ratio is 16, 60% and R is 10%. Now with this information, we assumed or let's say we calculated that the revised growth rate comes out to be 6%. Now we have to calculate that what was the original earnings per share to arrive at the changes in the dividend because we cannot say the original dividend of rupees 20 will hold good for the revised set of things. So what we did, we said that what is the original retention ratio? 75%, correct? Because original growth was 7.5, R was 10, basis that original retention ratio is this one. Yes, Shweta, last one went wrong. Okay, no worries. So, dividend per share was 20 and hence the earnings comes out to be 80 rupees. Because if 25% is the dividend and 20 rupees is the dividend, 80 rupees is the overall earnings. Basis that revised number of dividend comes out to 32. Because now 80 rupees earnings will not change, right? It, earnings will not change, earnings will remain same. So, in such a case, it will be 40% of 80, which is 32. And hence, the revised cost of equity will be 8.19. Okay. Let's come to... Seventeen, now 18. And then 19. Okay, let's come to the 18th question, students. Mr. H is currently holding 1 lakh shares of HM Limited. And currently, the share of HM Limited is trading on the Bombay Stock Exchange at rupees 50 per share. So, this you will have to read as Mr. H. Okay, Mr. H have a policy to reinvest the amount of any dividend received into the share back 
a gain of HM limited. So whatever is dividend received, it will reinvest. If HM limited has declared a dividend of rupees 10 per share, please determine the number of shares that Mr. A would hold after the reinvests dividend in shares of HM limited. Okay. Now, so this is a bit tricky question students. Okay. First of all, current market price is equal to 50. X dividend price will be how much? From our previous knowledge, can we say 50 minus 10 as 40 rupees? Yes. So 40 will be our X dividend price. Now the total amount of dividend received will be 1 lakh shares are being held at the rate of rupees 10. So in totality, they will receive rupees 10 lakh worth of dividend. And this will be reinvested at the rate of 40 per share students. This has to be remembered. So this 10 lakh will again be reinvested at 40 per share. So the additional shares will be 10 lakh divided by 40, which is 25,000 shares. Correct? So that total holding will be 25,000 plus what were the original shares? 1 lakh. So in totality, 1 lakh 25,000 shares. Easy students, this question was easy, a bit tricky. The trick was that the reinvestment will happen at a X dividend price, which is 40 per share students. Okay, understood. Let's move to the question number 19. Polling information is pertaining to DG limited. Number of shares is rupees 1 lakh. Earnings per share is 25 per share. P ratio and book value per share is also given. If the company decides to repurchase 5,000 shares at the prevailing market price, what is the resulting book value per share after the repurchasing? So out of 1 lakh shares, 5,000 shares are being repurchased at the current market price. What is the current market price? We have to compute that. Current market price can be computed using the P ratio. P ratio multiplied by earnings per share. This gives us the current market price. So 25 into 20. This comes out to be 500 per share. So this is the current market price. Now, so for calculating the book value per share after repurchasing, we need to calculate that what was the book value, total book value before repurchase. We will re re reduce whatever is the total amount that we have repurchased and I will arrive at the book value after repurchase. Okay. So book value of the company before repurchase, it will be how much? 1 lakh is the number of shares and book value is 400. That is given. So 1 lakh into 400. So this gives us 400 lakhs amount paid for repurchase. So students, whatever amount we have paid for the repurchase will reduce our book value. How much? 500 per share multiplied by 5000 shares. Okay, so amount paid for share repurchases 
1.25 crores or let's say 125 lakhs this will reduce from the overall 400 lakhs so the revised amount will be 375 lakhs sorry 275 lakhs now the number of shares after repurchase is actually how much are the number of shares after repurchase 95,000 right students 1 lakh were the original shares 5,000 has been repurchased Wait, student, sorry. So this actually, instead of 5,000, the shares repurchase. Please note, student, there is a small correction in the question. The shares repurchase should be 25,000, not 5,000. In the question itself, it should be 25,000. Yes, Tanishka, I have corrected it. Okay, the question it should be 25,000. So the number of shares after repurchase is 75,000 then, right? 1 lakh minus 25,000. And hence the per share book value is 2,75,000 divided by 75,000. It comes as 367 per share. Yes, Ashita Chitlapali, the answer is correct. Yes, Harmisha Teja Sanya Tanishka, I have corrected it. Teja, I have corrected it. Okay. There is a typo in the question. It should be 25,000. Okay. Perfect. Now students, let me quickly come to these MCQs. Yes, repurchase means buyback Gunjan. Perfect students. Now all of you, please focus here. Okay. I think Teja is asking for the question number 17 for the screenshot to be taken. Okay. You take it. Question number 17. This, this is the solution. Above is the question. Below is the solution. Okay. Quickly, let's move on to the MCQs. Perfect. So, students, you have to give answers. Okay. I will be asking and prompt what should be the right solution. Which one of the following is the assumption of the Gordon's model? KE is greater than growth. Retention ratio, once decided upon, is constant. Firm is an all equity firm and last all of the above. Very good. Mansi has given the answer also. Yes, tell me students. Come on. So the correct answer is D students, which I think all of you have stated correct. Now let's come to the second question. What should be the optimum dividend payout ratio when R is higher and K is lesser? Yes, very good. I think people have started, students, all of you have started giving the answers to the next questions. So the third question, which of the following is irrelevance theory? MM hypothesis, very easy. Correct? I'm just seeing Shweta, Teja, Harmisha, Manish, Kadambri, Sanya, Bhumika. Yes, very nice. Second is C. All of you are correct. Second is C. Third, we know. If the company's DP ratio is 60% and ROI is 16%, what should be the growth rate? Very easy.
fourth students what should be the answer of fourth now tell me fourth yes very nice harshita v is saying 9.6 good fifth question if the shareholders prefer regular income how does this affect the dividend decision it will lead to the payment of dividend it is the indicator to retain more earnings it has no impact on dividend decision or can't say it will lead to payment of dividend students correct okay wait there is something wrong that i did it should not be 9.6 students here it is mentioned as dp ratio that means we have to take 40% into 60 16% it should be 6.4 students it should be 6.4. So fourth is C. Gunjan. Okay, let me see who has given the right answer. Now, people are caught. So Parth Sarthi is correct. Tanishka is correct. Sanya is correct. Gunjan is correct. Sanya is correct again. Rupesh and Kadambri, you are also correct. Okay. So this is 6.4. Fifth, we have discussed. Six, mature companies having few investment opportunities will show high payout ratio. This statement is true, false, partial, true, none of these. So mature companies having few opportunities few investment opportunities will show high payout ratio. This is true. What are the different options other than cash used for distributing profits to the shareholders? Bonus stock split, both. It, it is both. Okay. Then eighth, which of the following statement is correct with respect to the Gordon's model? When IRR is greater than the cost of capital. So read IRR as R. Okay. The price per share increases and the dividend payout decreases. So they have given us four different situations. So. If you read out, I'm just putting the answers right. Okay. You can just read it out later on and assess which among the following is not an assumption of a Walters model. There is discrimination in taxes. See the firm has perpetual life. We understand rate of return and cost of capital are constant. That also information is freely available to all. Only this is what we are not okay with in terms of the yes no no i am not so i this tick i was just writing it should be c seventh it should be c okay now students mcqs are done let me just quickly tell you the stock split so what happens students in stock split Let's say I have a market cap, market capitalization, I hope everybody knows of let's say 1000 crores. This is broken into two parts. One is 100 rupees per share is the price and 10 crore is the number of shares. So if you multiply number of shares with the per unit value, you will arrive at the market cap. Now, stock split is the process by which the number of shares increases and price per share will also have an impact. So let's say 
the person who was holding one share will get broken into four shares. So now instead of 10 crores, we will have 40 crores of the number of shares. The reason why it happens because if you do a stock split, now earlier the shareholder has to sell one share of 100 rupees each. Now the shareholder will sell a share which is now 25 rupees. 25 into 40 which is 1000. Yes. So if the numbers becomes 40, the price per share will become 25 because now one share of 100 is now splitted into four shares of 25. So one share of 100 is split into four shares of 25. So Sanya is asking 10th MCQ. So 10th MCQ is actually related to the Graham and Dad models. That's what I was trying to say that it's not there now. So hence you can ignore that. Okay. So there was a specific formula over there using that it has been calculated, but you can ignore that. Yes, Gunjan. Now coming to the Hindi summary class in Hindi. So इस चैप्टर में हमने अभी तक जितना भी कुछ पढ़ा है दैट इज रिलेटेड टू डिविडेंड अब उस डिविड सो so, सबसे पहले डिविडेंड का मतलब क्या होता है जो भी हम शेयर होल्डर्स को रिटर्न दे रहे हैं किस फॉर्म में या तो कैश की फॉर्म में या फिर बोनस की फॉर्म में करेक्ट अगर कैश की फॉर्म में हम डिविडेंड दे रहे हैं तो हो सकता है उसकी वजह से शेयर प्राइस पे कुछ इंपैक्ट आए अगर शेयर अब हमने इसमें ही पढ़ा दो थ्योरीज पढ़ी एक पढ़ी ऐसी थ्योरी जिसमें कि जितना भी हम डिविडेंड देंगे उसका इंपैक्ट शेयर प्राइस पे और मैं ये बोलना चाहूंगा कि वैल्यू ऑफ द फॉर्म पे नहीं आएगा और दूसरी थ्योरीज ऐसी पढ़ी जहां पे हमने ये पढ़ा कि अगर हम डिविडेंड देंगे तो उसका इंपैक्ट शेयर प्राइस पे आ सकता है और वैल्यू ऑफ द फॉर्म पे भी आ सकता है तो जो पहली थ्योरीज पढ़ी उनको हमने बोला इरेलेवेंस थ्योरी या जिसका कोई रेलेवेंस ही नहीं है वैल्यू ऑफ द फॉर्म पे चाहे हम डिविडेंड दें या ना दें ठीक है नाउ उसको हमने बोला एम MM अप्रोच और एम MM अप्रोच में हमने क्या बोला कि हम जितना भी पैसा देते हैं डिविडेंड के फॉर्म में उतना ही हमें शेयर कैपिटल और रेस करनी पड़ती है तो जितना हमने प्राइस में लूज करा उतना एक्स्ट्रा हमें इनफ्लो हो गया शेयर कैपिटल इशू करके और गॉर्डन और वॉल्टर मॉडल क्या बोलते हैं गॉर्डन और वॉल्टर मॉडल ये बोलते हैं हमारा जो प्राइस होगा इक्विटी शेयर का दैट इज वो वो डिपेंड है दो चीजों पर एक तो है जो हम डिविडेंड देना चाह रहे हैं वो दूसरा आर और के ई का रिलेशन आर मतलब जो हमें इंटरनल इन्वेस्टमेंट पे इनकम हो रही है और के ई जो हमारा एक्सपेक्टेशन है शेयर होल्डर का शेयर होल्डर का जो एक्सपेक्टेशन है कि कितना रिटर्न आना चाहिए इन दोनों चीजों पे वॉल्टर और गॉर्डन मॉडल का फॉर्मूला आधारित है फिर हमने बहुत सारे क्वेश्चन पढ़े और उसके बाद हमने डिविडेंड डिस्काउंट मॉडल पढ़ा जिसमें हमने बोला कि प्रेजेंट वैल्यू अगर हम निकाल लेंगे डिफरेंट जो अलग अलग डिविडेंड हम दे रहे हैं तो देन हमारा प्राइस निकल के आ जाएगा फिर हमने पढ़ा स्टॉक स्प्लिट स्टॉक स्प्लिट में हमने ये बोला कि एक स्टॉक एक शेयर को हम किसी भी रेशियो में बांट सकते हैं इस एग्जाम्पल में मैंने बोला है कि चार शेयर में बटेगा जो टोटल वैल्यू है वो भी चार शेयरों में बढ़ जाएगी अगर टोटल वैल्यू सौ रुपए की थी एक शेयर की तो अब चार शेयर पच्चीस पच्चीस रुपए की हो जाएंगे सो दैट टोटल वैल्यू हमारी सेम रहे ओके ओके गुंजन आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू हैव एंजॉयड दीज टू सेशंस ऑन डिविडेंड आई रिक्वेस्ट एवरी टू प्लीज डू रिवाइज वेल okay and all the best for your preparations thank you thanks a lot the session is completed